Hello, this is Mighty Owl. Ooh, what a wonderful day outside. Let's join Latifa and Jenny. Oh, cool, the girls are making up their own hopscotch patterns. They're each using 11 boxes and numbering them according to their different patterns. Both Latifa and Jenny put a zero in their first box. And Latifa will add four every time to fill her boxes. Jenny will add 12 each time to get to the next number. Let's help them create a table that shows each one's pattern. All right, let's start with Latifa's pattern. Zero plus four is four. Um, next, four plus four is eight. Eight plus four is 12. And if we keep adding those fours, we get 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, 36, and finally, 40. Ooh, fantastic work. Now we can fill in the table with Jenny's pattern. Zero plus 12, well, that's 12. 12 plus 12 is 24. We keep on going. 36, 48, 60, 72, 84, 96, 108, and finally, 120. Now that the table is filled out, let's compare some of the numbers for each pattern. How does the number in Jenny's second box compare to the number in Latifa's second box? Well, Jenny has a 12 and Latifa has a 4. Now, if you add 8 to Latifa's 4, we can get to Jenny's 12. Hmm, I wonder, how else can we get to 12? Ooh, that's right, by multiplying Latifa's 4 by 3. And how about the numbers in the third box? Let's compare those. Okay, if we do the same thing as we did in the last box and add 8 to Latifa's 8, we have 8 plus 8, 16, which is not Jenny's 24. But if we multiply Latifa's 8 by 3, that does equal Jenny's 24. Oh, I think I'm sensing a pattern here. If we multiply Latifa's number by 3, then we should get Jenny's number. Let's check the numbers in the seventh box to see if we're correct. All right, Latifa has 24 in her seventh box and Jenny has 72. All right, and if we multiply 24 times three, that's 72, how neat. So we were right. Jenny's numbers are three times bigger than Latifa's. And now that we've filled out the table, we can graph these values on a coordinate plane to help us visually compare them. We'll use the box number for our X coordinate and the number inside the box for the Y coordinate. Now let's start with Latifa's numbers and write out the coordinates. All right, the first box means the X value is one and the number inside the box is zero. So our coordinate is one comma zero. And the second box means the X value is two and the number inside the box is four. And so we have two comma four. Now, doing that for the rest of the boxes gives us the following coordinates. One comma zero, two comma four, three comma eight, four comma twelve, five comma sixteen, six comma twenty, seven comma twenty four, eight comma twenty eight, nine comma thirty two, ten comma thirty six, and eleven comma forty. Okay, now it's time to plot them. So the first coordinate puts us at one on the x-axis. Um, oh, but there's a zero for the y value, so we don't move up any spaces. All right, now for the second coordinate, we follow the x-axis to two and then move up four units. Perfect. Now for the third coordinate, we trace the x-axis to three and then we move up eight. Excellent, let's keep in filling the rest of Latifah's points. Here they are. And now we can do the same thing with Jenny's points. Using the table, we can rewrite her numbers as coordinates as well. 1, 0, 2, 12, 3, 24, 4, 36, 5, 48, 6, 60, 7, 72, 8, 84, 9, 96, 10, 108, 11, 120. And now to plot them on the same coordinate plane. 
Uh Aha. Looking at the graph, we can see two straight lines that both start at the same point, at 1, 0. Jenny's line goes up faster and is steeper, though. Well, this makes sense, since Jenny's pattern added 12 each time, while Latifah's only added 4. And notice that the space between the lines grows over time. The difference between the numbers for each box gets bigger each time. All right, good work here. You know, I think Will was inspired by watching the girls make patterns, and he wants to make one of his own. Let's help him out. Will wants to see what kind of pattern he can make on a graph if the x values start at 0 and go up by 2, and the y values start at 30 and go down by 3. Sounds like an interesting graph. Now let's start by putting the number patterns into a table. Starting with the x values, we'll put 0 and then add 2. 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. All right, now for the y values. We're going to start with 30 and then subtract 3 each time. So, 30, 27, 24, 21, 18, 15, 12, 9, 6, 3, 0. And now we're ready to place these points on the graph. Now the first point is 0, 30. Here we go all the way up to 30 on the y-axis. And the next point is 2, 27. So we move along the x-axis to 2, and then we move up to 27. Et voila! Next is 4, 24. All right, so there's the point on the graph, and let's just fill in the rest of the graph. 6, 21, 8, 18, 10, 15, and there we go, so on, and perfect. All right, now look at that. Will also made a straight line with his pattern, but his line goes down and not up. You wonder why that is. With Latifah and Jenny's numbers, as the x values went up, the y values also went up. But with Will, as the x values increased, the y values decreased. Oh, that explains why Will's line went down. How interesting. And what a mighty pattern, Will. Good on ya. Oh, and look, another one. Jenny has created a table for us to find a pattern in as well. All right, and she has an input and output table. Let's see if we can find the rule for the table. I love mysteries. All right, let's see. The input increases, okay, by 2. And the output increases by 10 each time. And so if we were to continue the table, the next input would be 12 plus 2, or 14. And the next output would be 60 plus 2. 10, which is 70. Now, what if the input was, let's say, 30? Then what would be the output? Well, it would take too long to continue the table until we got to the 30. So let's take a look at the relationship between the input and output and see if we can find a shortcut. Now, how can we get from 2 to 10? Well, we can add 8, but let's see if that works for the input of 4, for example. 4 plus 8 is 12, oh, but our table has a 20. And so that means that adding 8 isn't the correct relationship between our input and output. What else could we try? Do you have any ideas? Oh, yeah. 2 times 5 is 10. Let's try multiplying by 5. 4 times 5 is 20, and that matches. Uh, But let's check one more just to be sure. According to our table, if the input is 12, then the output should be 60, because 12 times 5 is 60. And yeah, it works. So, to find the output, we can multiply the input by 5. Great! We found a shortcut specific to this pattern. Now, back to the question of our input of 30. What would the output be? Well, 30 times 5 is 150, so the output would be 150. Cool, we found the rule for Jenny's table. Wow, you really rocked it today, comparing patterns and making visual representations on graphs. 
And with that, I'll see you in the next video lesson, my mighty friend.